Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe if you YouTube for their name. So, um, anyways, this one looks. Uh, mine comes up as Mr. Joy. But anyways, anyways, back on track here. Um, this one is a reflection in the y-axis. So we see the graph move from this side, pushed across to here, and that ends up right where it should be. Thank you, Danny. And uh, this one here is a reflection in the x-axis. So we see the graph rotate this way, end up down here. Thank you, Anthony. So um, the next one is one of those things you might think it's like worse, but it's actually better. Uh, we're doing two reflections, Ooh. but you don't have to decide where it is now. It just it's on both, so it doesn't matter if you do x first then y or y then x. Um, it's as long as you do both. So what I'm going to do with you here is first I want you to try and picture about where you think it's going to end up. So that's one reflection. Maybe you go x axis then one y. But see if you can visualize it. Right? If you can, that's really good. But if not, maybe you're not super visual. Here's the good news. All we have to do is start with the points and apply the transformation. So this point is negative 5, 0. This point is negative 2, 2. Oh, sorry, uh, 3, 3. And this point is 2, 3. And this point is 4, 1. So in a reflection, what happens to the coordinates? signs change. So this time, negative 5, 0 is going to become positive 5, 0. Negative 3, or sorry, negative 2, 3 is going to become positive 2 and negative 3. So even though I don't know where the graph's going to end up, I don't need to as long as I apply the transformation properly. 2, 3 will be negative 2, negative 3. And 4, 1 will be negative 4, negative 1. So this is about where I should expect to see the graph after those two reflections. Okay, so again, if you can't picture all the way to the end, that's okay, as long as you apply your transformations properly. Okay, so um, this is a related topic. It won't feel super related just yet. Um, we're going to take a look at inverses. How many people remember what an inverse is from Math 11? Those are the people you will cheat off poss possibly then when it comes to the unit test. Um, Inverse, anyone you want to describe? What, what is an inverse? Hang on a sec. You guys are, you must be exhausted in the middle here. I'm going to branch out. I'm either going to look. Thank you, Adriel. Go for it. Right, so switching X with Y with something in there. Um, the way I usually describe an inverse is um, it basically does the opposite, is kind of the way you think of it, is um, it does the opposite. simplest terms as possible. Most mathematicians would probably kick me if I told them that was the definition, right? Um, but basically, if the function multiplies by 2, the inverse would divide, divide by 2. If it adds 1, the inverse would subtract one. Subtract 1. So that's kind of the way we think about it in a simple way. So um, just to solve algebraically, so Adriel, what's the first step? You already said it. That's why I was picking on you. So the first step you've forgotten from last year was to switch x and y. Um, do you remember what happens next? Solve for y. Solve for y, that's correct. Okay, so this time we're going to take a look at just an, a simple graph, y equals 2x. And um, we're going to take a look at it on the graphing calculator when we're done. And we're going to take a look at uh, a small table of values here. So first let's start by finding it algebraically. So step one is to switch x and y, and this is what I end up with. Step two is to solve it for y. So that means x minus 4 equals 2y. x minus 4 over 2 equals y. It's always a good idea when you do an inverse to try and just quickly double check. Originally, I multiply by 2, add 4. This time I will subtract 4, divide by 2. So I'm on the right track. Um, so this is the inverse here. And we want to take a look in this table. I've picked a few easy points. So 
So if I'm at x equals 0 on the function, what will the y value be um, for the function here? So x equals 0, what's the y value? 4. Good. Notice you didn't even need your calculator, eh? Okay, um, at x equals 1? Good, 6, yeah. So that's where we're, we're at for the function. Now let's take a look at what happens on the inverse. If we look at the inverse graph here, then what are we going to get if I'm at x equals 4? 0. Good, 0. 0 out of 2 is still 0. So um, what if I'm at 6? 1. Yeah, so that'll be 2 divided by 2, 1. Okay, we'll talk about this in just a second. Let's look at the graph and see what uh, we can figure out about these. So the graphs we're going to be interested in is y equals x, the function, and, whoops, did I do that wrong? I think I did. y equals x, 2x plus 4. Yeah, y equals 2x plus 4. And y equals x minus 4 divided by 2. Okay, so there is some kind of nice symmetry happening here. Um, it's kind of, you know, they all sort of meet at that one point. Does anybody see a reflection here? If you do, just think about it. We'll talk about it on the next graph. But see if you can find a reflection in there. We're going to come back to it. Okay, for now, the reflection might not be as obvious, but one thing that should be a bit more obvious is what's happening here. When I go from 0 and end up at 4 in the function, what would you expect the opposite to do then if I gave you a 4? It should get a 0, right? It should undo or do the opposite of the function. So the same thing happens when I go from 1 to 6. That means I go 6 to 1 when I'm in the inverse. So that's going to be true for all the numbers we use. It doesn't matter that we've just picked those. They're not just convenient. It will always do the opposite, or, well, what I'm calling the opposite here. So let's just verify it one more time quickly. I'm going to let you fill this one in on your own. This is now the graph. So find the uh, inverse equation and find those points. We will take a look at the graph together. Okay, so um, just to recap, the first step is still the same. We should have x equals y squared. Oops. X equals y squared uh, minus 4. Now we're going to try to solve for y. Um, the first step was probably the best if you did it like this, and then took the square root of x plus 4. Okay, now anybody have a problem with this? Bobby? Yeah, so technically, if we want to be complete about it, it's going to be plus or minus. For what we're going to do here, it's, it's you know, that is the correct equation. But when we look at this table, we're just going to look at the positive part, okay? So um, if we use the value 2, what do you get for the y-coordinate? 0, okay. Are you guys even doing it, or are you just looking at the... <laughs> You're just looking at, okay, well, good for you for being smart. Uh, oops, sorry, that's the wrong number. <laughs> Maybe it's two. See, I can't even cheat. I just look at the answer, didn't write it down. So let's verify it on the way back, though. Let's try one. If I put in zero, so I'm going to put in zero here. So zero plus four, that's four. The square root of four is two. So that works. Um, same thing here. If I put in negative three, negative three plus four is one. Best square root ever. Square root of one is two. So they do still match up. Okay. Now, Let's take a look at the pictures here. So that's the picture of y equals x. y equals x squared, or what was it, minus 4. And, oops, y equals x squared minus 4. And the other one, which is y equals So this is why the picture is incomplete, we didn't put the plus or minus. Um, only part of the graph here is showing when it comes to the uh, inverse. This line here where the mouse, the crosshairs is moving, this is the inverse, but it's incomplete. So if I add the negative sign, you'll see the rest of the reflection shows up. Okay? So you can see it in the picture too, that that's why plus and minus. Diagonal diagonal line? Uh, that's y equals x. Okay. So I'm about to try to show you guys the reflection here too. 
But um, you can see why the plus and minus is needed because that gives me the full picture here, just like there's a little parabola here. Okay. So if I'm looking at this as a reflection, you got to watch my fingers here. I'm going to do them together and see if you can follow it and see the reflection. So if I was to start here, I'm going to trace the heart. If I do it on the other part of the line, which is here and here, as I come in towards that mirror, see they're both the same distance away from the mirror, and then they hit the mirror, and then they do the heart part of it as well. So it's hard to see that reflection. It's easier if we go back to the first one. Well, if we just tilt our head. Tilt your head, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. um, so I think it was uh, 2x plus 4, and y equals x minus 4 divided by 2. Okay, so now can you see, this is the easier one to find the reflection. Okay. So as they move along, they come in together, they bounce away together, and then they keep moving apart at the same rate. So this time, the mirror is not stri straight up and down, it's not horizontal, it's right along the diagonal, right along the line y equals x. So that's how come the uh, inverse shows up, how it's related to the other reflections. The inverse is a reflection on the line y equals x. So let's uh, recap some of this. If you're on x, y, how do you find it in the inverse graph? Yx, yeah. They were flipped. 